Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of the Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I go through and without being sponsored or getting any promotionals, review these tools that I have seen floating around throughout the year. I have done, at the end of this year at least, over 50 of these. So check out the playlist up above and link down below if you wanna check out some of the other ones that I have done. And today we are going to be reviewing that one. That's the tool that we're going to be reviewing today. and. As with all of these Honest Review series videos, all of my summaries of the tools are at the very end of the video if you wanna go and check those out. All right, so without further ado, let's go get started. To uh, visualize the collective knowledge network of a, of a group of people. Um, mm -hmm. We use it a lot within organizations or within companies, um, but we've also done quite a few projects um, with different organizations coming together for a common cause or a common goal. It works for that as well, as long as you have something in common. You don't, you cannot take like a hundred random people and put them together and make like a knowledge network or a knowledge graph from them. But you can take people that are connected to a common um, area of expertise or a common cause and put them together and have them map their knowledge network. We've done quite a few of those uh, with different organizations. Um, uh, especially in government or government related mm -hmm. agencies. So if you want to learn more about that, how do you map your knowledge network from people, uh, please stick around and I'll show a couple of the things that we do and uh, we have developed on it. Well, and one question on that before you move on is, you know, there's, there's this um, kind of like the LinkedIn network phenomenon where, you know, lots of different people, you said, like, if you threw 100 different people in, there's no, you know, you don't know if they're connected. But what if they were? Is that something that you can do with GuruScan that, you know, you can discover how you're connected to people? Or is that not part of what this is? Mm, that's not really part of what we do. So mm -hmm. um, we basically, we start with a, a challenge and from that challenge or that goal, uh, and of course, if you do that in a company, that challenge can be very straightforward. Like, hey, we're all together in this project. We need to develop whatever a, a sort of a piece of legislation or we need to develop a product or we need to develop a service. So you know why you're there. And it's mm -hmm. really simple and straightforward. But you could also say like, um, I don't know, um, I'm working at my own company trying to improve diversity and inclusion. And I would like to get connected to other people who do that and basically share with those people in like a cross-organizational community of practice, what are these other people doing? And I want to learn from them and make like a knowledge inventory for that. We run uh, open workshop sessions every month. Um, so this was uh, last month's open workshop session. Uh, what customers are using will be very similar it might be slightly different because of specific customer demands mm -hmm. um usually it's all in english because we work with mostly international companies uh, but we also do support dutch well since we are from the netherlands and since last week basically last month i would say we also support german as a language mm -hmm. so uh also carrying that one it is a multilingual solution, so you can enter multiple languages if you want to. One of the basic things that we put in here is um, a, a folksonomy approach to building the knowledge taxonomy. So anyone in the organization or anyone in the interest group can start a new knowledge topic if they want to. Hmm. Uh, I'll now do the asynchronous one. So that is like, I can just do this whenever I want to. Um, so basically go and create a new knowledge topic as soon as I want to do that. So let me go for, uh, I don't know, it's winter weather right now. Let me first show you that. If you enter something that already exists, it will show you. Oh, we, nice. we try to restrict the uh, duplicates. It's, it never works completely because people make like many different mm -hmm. sidelines and mistakes. I'll show another one uh, later on. Um, but we've been talking about the winter weather before, so uh, let me just enter winter weather as a topic. Um, ad adjusting to the winter weather, rain, snow, and uh, cold. Next one, well, 
Next question is your own knowledge level. So are you really good mm. in this or are you, do you know nothing about it? And of course, it can be very uh, viable to start a new knowledge topics topic while you know nothing about it because mm -hmm. you're interested to learn more. Mm -hmm. Or it can be very viable to start a knowledge topic because you're the expert. So you join a company, you're onboarding somewhere, or you've learned something in a project that you're doing mm -hmm. and just want to make sure that others are able to find that as well. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's choose intermediate. Sounds like a nice knowledge level for this. Uh, go next. And that's basically where the most important part takes place because now um, the question is, who do you know that's knowledgeable on this? So who do you know that's really good at um, working with winter weather? And maybe this is, um, you know, going along in that same theme of things that I'm sort of familiar with and I wonder how it fits in. <laughs> sort of like a, a Reddit upvote, downvote. So just because I think Renzo is a expert doesn't mean everyone else thinks they're an expert. Um, no. And maybe maybe I'm like, no, everyone thinks this person is an expert, but really that's a misnomer. And they're irritated. Everyone keeps telling them like, hey, you're an expert in this. So is there a way to do like kind of voting of, of sorts? Um, well, we take a slightly different uh, angle okay. there due okay. to a, a number of reasons. Well, let me first uh, finish this topic and then I'll... Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll go into that because I think it's okay. an interesting topic and it's always uh, interesting to sort of see the different angles and see the different things that people want to do. Um, so let me, uh, I think I uh, had uh, you in there and uh, oh, let's put in Marika as well. So if you have an existing person, they will be found. Uh, in mm -hmm. this case, Marika, um, what I showed you before, Ashley, you weren't there, so I could add you. So people can also add new persons mm -hmm. in that network that are not yet part of it. So mm -hmm. basic network theory networks are have no boundary. So if you do this within an organization, that organization, of course, has a boundary. But mm -hmm. networks and knowledge networks have no boundaries. So people will know experts outside of that boundary mm -hmm. that you have applied. So that's why we deliberately allow people to identify experts completely free. Of course, from a organizational perspective, you can say, well, we want to focus on internal or we want to focus on specific department or only on innovation or mm -hmm. only on a certain region. Um, but you will always find, find some people outside of it uh, that are still relevant to take into account. You can see that clearly, like if you're using working with a lot of third parties. Maybe there's a third party that, you know, is is a consultant, for instance, that you need to be able to put in there and they're not technically part of your organization. If you are working in an organization and you will find an external expert, of course, the barrier to contact that person is a lot higher because you may not know what you want to share. You may not know what you're allowed to share. There may be you maybe you need to sign like NDAs or whatever. So, of course, if you find internal experts, that's usually always a lot easier. So we just made a knowledge topic, in this case, winter weather, adjusting to the winter, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can see, of course, that now it's just me uh, with a knowledge level intermediate and the three endorsements that I made. Um, what you can see is that the endorsements are anonymous. So of course, now I can see that I did these because they're blue, they're like these switches are activated. Other people will only be able to see that it's one endorsement. Um, we do that deliberately for a couple of reasons. The most important ones are that we try and make uh, and not stimulate the psychological effect of people being uh, in a reciprocal relationship. So if I give you a recommendation, for instance, then you are sort of psychologically primed to give me a recommendation back. Yep just because that's how people are. You want to be a nice person. You just got recommendation from someone. You, oh, well, oh, they're really nice. And you just want to give them a recommendation back. Um, of course, in the database, you can see who gave those recommendations and we show them on a cumulative matter. So you can see the total network, but mm -hmm. you can never see like, hey, you gave me a recommendation on this specific topic because that's we that. try not to promote that behavior. And therefore also, um, recommendations are only positive and never negative. There are a lot of possibilities also to structure knowledge 
Um, I'll show a little bit right here. If you change, you can add tags, which is free labels that you can add to topics. You can make hierarchies with parent topics. So that's um, one to many. And you can make linked topics, which link different topics together. Uh, in is there a possibility if you have a control vocabulary, you can load that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's what I'll do in a, a right after this one. I'll show mm -hmm. the, um, the ESCO version. Because then you can see like a a vast a structure that we import, and you can just see all that structural elements there as well. So um, let me show you uh, the network view, and then I'll show you the uh, the extent to where you can go with your structuring. Uh, if you would, uh, for instance, take that ESCO structure uh, there. So this is the uh, the knowledge graph. This knowledge graph has been made by. I think four or five people in, in let's say 15 minutes. Uh, so that's the demo version. If you would make these kind of graphs with your own team, and if you do that with a team of 15 to 20 people with no prior information, so no preceding anything or no uploading any information, you can expect to get, uh, let's say around a hundred knowledge topics and mm. up to 2000 knowledge endorsements. Those mm. are, uh, very common figures that we get from uh, workshops that take about an hour. So just get people in that workshop, ha have them do that in a synchronous manner, uh, and that really gets you a lot of information. So a few questions <laughs> on that. So um, one, when you say they created this graph, they're doing it with the process that you just showed us, right? Where they're adding a topic, they're kind of like showing who's an expert in what. It's a slightly different uh, approach. Okay. We call that a knowledge booster. So the, the okay. adding a new topic is an asynchronous matter. So everyone can do oh, that I all see. the time whenever they want to. Um, the booster session is a synchronous session where you start that with a group of people. So with a team or project, um, 10, 15, 20, 25 people, whatever it is, you just dive into that and you do that together. So you walk through mm -hmm. these different steps. It basically uses the same steps. So knowledge brainstorm, so what knowledge topics are relevant or important for us, connecting those topics to experts, so that's switched around, and then identifying your own knowledge level. And um, when the graph is being created, it's it's a visual graph, right? It's not yeah. um, like an RDF or label property graph behind the <laughs> scenes, or is it? Um, no, it's it's a, we have a visual graph. We have different uh, visual graphs in there. And of course, um, I would say our tool is the best, I have to say the best, uh, at uh, making these graphs and getting this information from people, mm -hmm. um, getting that um, tacit knowledge from groups of people within the organization or, or between mm -hmm. different organizations. I, I think our tool is definitely not the best in making a detailed analysis. There are other tools to do that. Um, okay. Go into all the, uh, well, all the all the organizational network analysis or yeah. okay. centrality between us and so on. Yeah. So I, the way, the reason I'm asking these questions is if I am a person that wants to use those other tools to do network analysis, um, and I've already done this because this is great and I just needed to get the information in and, you know, find some insights. Um, how is the information being stored behind the scenes? Because if it's even in like a, a simplified CSV file, I could probably export that and then go and do the things that I need to do with yep. it. So is that an option? Yep. Yeah, you can, uh, as a customer, well, we're in Europe, so we're uh, bound to uh, work with the GDPR uh, mm -hmm. legislation, which is the privacy legislation here. Um, therefore, we can only um, sort of, process the data and the information and a customer can always export their information. Uh, again, in this network, uh, you can see different knowledge topics. You can see different people connected to it. If you select the person, you will see different people that are lined up right there. You can click on these people and see what other stuff they know, sort of walk through that network. Uh, if you want to dive Patrick into- Lamb is one of the people in your network. <laughs> He's Sorry? in my network too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, it's a it's very famous. People are always there. Yeah. And then if you want to know more, like, hey, this is a really interesting topic, and uh, you can again, you can go from that network view to the more detailed view, and see that knowledge topic, and really see uh, the different people there, and see their 
a recommendations and or the knowledge level, depending on what you're looking for. Again, this is another instance of our application. Uh, this one has been filled with all the ESCO uh, stuff. Um, what I'll do, uh, actually, I'll provide you a link to this resource. It's a Great. publicly available resource by the European Commission, so anyone can download it in all the 27 official languages by the European Union. And what it basically has is it has different skills and different jobs. So um, you can just look for whatever topic you want. In this case, the topic is business knowledge. It has a little description. Mm -hmm. um, then it's covered in a hierarchy. So it's part of the skills and competence hierarchy. Well, you can see the different layers. Yeah. All these layers are selectable. So if you say, well, I want to chunk up a little bit to a higher level, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so let me go one level up. You can see that, well, one level up and then has some, some explanation there. You're and you have your more detailed stuff right here. So in this case, it's quite a big uh, a big thing because it's a lot of different topics there. Um, as I mentioned, there are 14,000 skills in here and I think 3,500 jobs. Um, so let's just go for anything like manage a vehicle fleet. Sounds really and cool. And these, these seem to be more managed taxonomies, but people can add their own. Yeah. So this, yeah. this, is, this is very, uh, very well managed. So... Uh, you need this to do like manage a vessel fleet. And if you're able to do this, so manage a vessel fleet owned by a company, <clears throat> know the capacity and so on. It's a hierarchy. It's part of the skills and competence hierarchy. And it's essential if you want to be a fleet commander or an inland water transport general manager and so on. You can read the other ones. Uh, it's optional knowledge if you want to manage a vehicle fleet. And you can also go for fleet commander. Uh, it's and I'm part... assuming there's no taxonomy management piece to this. This is all done somewhere else and then just imported. Taxonomy and then management people is are not adding to it. That's just yeah. part of the back end if you wanted to export as a file. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So you see different elements here. Hierarchy is there. Um, there's different linked topics, so essential mm -hmm. knowledge, skills, and so on. So you can make all that. And you can also use tags as a free uh, a free format. And then, mm -hmm. of course, you can enter multiple uh, knowledge topics right here. Cool. I like that. Um, I love how you're bringing the folksonomy, the taxonomy, <laughs> the um, way that people um, can add their own information to it to help them discover things. Uh, I like that.